Times are hard, and recently the hikes in energy prices and soaring cost of living has meant more and more people have been asking if it is possible to live off-grid in the UK. My husband Fraser and I have been living off-grid in Lincolnshire for over five years, and we now share this life with our daughter Grace and our son Albie. This is the story of our off-grid journey so far. Before we chose to move off-grid, we were paying a mortgage for a small bungalow that we wanted to renovate and extend, but the bank were refusing to give us the funds we needed in order to do that. We were both working five days a week, were tired, stressed and frustrated. We felt trapped. Fraser had bought a piece of land before we met, which he had used as a yard for his tree surgery business and had grown from an empty field to a young woodland. We knew we couldn't make the most of either the house or the land whilst we had both and with over 3,000 trees and hours of labour invested into the land, it was obvious what we had to do. We moved on to our land, and once we had sold our house, we used the money to set up our off-grid life. We moved into a mobile home in the middle of winter, with no heating, running water, flushing toilets, or constant electricity. We used a generator for power, and replaced the old gas heater with a wood burner. For those first nights, we slept on a mattress on the floor of the living room, in front of that wood burner the two of us and our two dogs. During the first few months, we added drainage and built our water filtration system so that we could collect and filter rainwater. This was the first major milestone in our journey, but without constant power, we were still unable to have a fridge or freezer, making food storage very difficult. The journey to full-time power was a long one. This was partly due to the fact that we built an oak framed barn to hold the solar panels which took approximately a year to build as we built it ourselves and were still working full time. Once the barn was completed we were able to turn our attention to our solar power system. It took months of research and weeks to install but eventually we completed it and were able to have full time power. At the point we switched on our electricity for the first time our daughter Grace was 10 months old. We decided to turn our attention to food production. We bought and built a polytunnel, which we kitted out with raised beds and planted immediately in order to reduce our food bills and increase our self-sufficiency. We completed the polytunnel just as our son Albie was born. The polytunnel is still very much a learning curve, but growing and eating our own food has brought us an element of enjoyment to this off-grid life, which had previously been lacking. Whilst our water filtration system has served us well, we still find our demand for water outstrips supply and that we run out. Because of this, we are now looking to increase the size of our supply by installing a bigger tank and creating a shallow well in order to supplement our rainwater collection. We plan to complete this by the end of this year. We also hope to get chickens in order to further increase our self-sufficiency. The reason we moved onto the land was to escape our mortgage. However, with two growing children, we cannot stay in a mobile home forever. Our dream is to build a house, which we plan to build ourselves in the same style as our barn. When we first moved off-grid, the majority of off-grid YouTubers were based in the US and Canada, surrounded by stunning mountainous scenery and beautiful forests. We knew living off-grid in the UK would look very different to this, and decided to share our journey on YouTube to show that whilst it might look different, it can still be done.